Hi, welcome back. Now that you've seen the Hello World ping pong example of Omnibus, we're going to move towards a counter example that actually keeps some state, is not just effects. And um, we're going to add async to the counter and show you how um, the event bus can manage uh, async reductions and things like your Redux Saga or NGRX. We'll first show this with um, basic event bus primitives and then move on to an abstraction called a service that uh, might be more like your NGRX or create async thunk if you know Redux. So let's start by just perusing our setup. We have a vanilla JS file um, uses uh, buttons that we'll attach listeners to in index. We have a, a bus, very simple um, declaration and instantiation of a bus that carries uh, flux standard actions. And we'll see some of these actions defined later. We have a spy that prints out um, any actions that go onto the bus. And uh, we have a, a service that we're going to flesh out a little bit. It's going to define increment and increment async actions. And yes, although these are flux standard actions, we're not sending them to Redux. We're triggering them onto the bus. And here in index is where everything really happens. We can attach triggers to the increment and increment async button. We'll fill those out in a second. We'll update the count in the DOM just with some raw vanilla uh, JS. And just to prove everything is working, we will uh, use this update count in DOM function to show that we are able to keep track of the, uh, the count, or we're able, we're able to send the count into the DOM. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, when we are uh, clicking the synchronous increment button, we need to do something. So we have this increment action, we have the bus, and all we need to do is say bus.trigger uh, increment. You have to call it as a function, and then it returns a flux standard action, and then our console should show us after we click because we have a spy on the console, we should see counter increment, counter increment. Cool. Well, it isn't incrementing yet because we haven't hooked up listeners, but it is incrementing. And uh, while we're here, we might as well uh, fire off the increment async as well, bus.trigger increment async. Okay. Now, what is going to be our state. Um, our state can really start so simple. Omnibus is not opinionated about how you manage state. Uh, so you can actually just do the simplest thing possible, which is uh, a count. Now, what we need to do is say, whenever our bus sees one of these increments, we need to increment the count and put it back in the DOM. Now this might seem like an unnecessary indirection in a, such a simple file like this, but just go with it. It'll get more interesting as we go. So the bus must listen for an event. And uh, one of the nice things about these flux standard actions is that they have a function called a match, which returns a predicate, which will test an action on the bus. And if it is uh, returning true, then the following function will be called. So what do we need to do? Well, let's just do the simplest possible thing. Update count in DOM with the incremented value of count. All right, let's clear that. Refresh this, make sure nothing is hanging around. And boom, there we go. Now you might think, oh, this doesn't use a store. Not really important at the moment. Um, the state is local to this component. Um, and like I said, in the services example, we'll use a more managed form. Right now, this is very still very side effect oriented. And it's totally fine for this to be our side effect. Update a variable, put it in the DOM. Huh, there we go. So now increment async, that's gonna be a little bit more interesting. And uh, 
What we need to do then is to define a listener that listens for increment async in this similar way, but then actually does uh, some, some operation that we need. So let's get started by going into the services folder and the counter file. And what this is going to look like is the following, and I'll explain every little bit of it as we go. We're just going to say um, const async listener. We're going to declare this and say whenever you get increment async match, whenever you get an action matching increment async, then do what? Well, we're going to return a unit of time. We're going to say our side effect is to wait 2,000 milliseconds. And then what? Well, then we actually have to get uh, the completion of the 2,000 milliseconds to be turned into an increment action. And we do that with an observer. We say uh, bus dot observe with, and this lets us turn the return value of after, which is probably undefined, um, into, well, when we get that next value, um, we don't care what it is. We just want to turn it into an invocation of the increment action. It's a lot of words, but check it out. Let's look at the console here. Increment, fine. Now, increment async, one, two, and there we go. Now, actually, I want to refresh this so that there's only one listener. We'll talk about how to deal with hot module reloading later. But there's your increment async, and two seconds later, your increment. There's a lot of places we can go here, but the most important one to go to first is the idea of a concurrency strategy. Because if I click increment async twice quickly, what do you think will happen? Well, there's a default behavior, and that is to simply listen for um, the uh, increment async actions and begin a new timer for every action immediately, and then they'll complete in the order they started, no, in this case. Um, but it turns out that that is not the kind of correct UX to use for certain situations. So we're just going to demonstrate with the counter, because it's easy to understand, what each of these um, modes would look like. Now, um, there is a way to um, switch modes. That is, I'm going to add something to the code here, and I don't want you to freak out. If I go into listen queuing mode, then our hash is going to have listen queuing in it. And listen queuing is what we want to put right here. So after we make listen queuing work, I'll make it dynamic to actually use that hash. Uh, for now, a hard-coded listen queuing is going to be fine. And when I click this one, two, three times, three increment asyncs have gone, followed by three increments, two seconds apart each. This is essential uh, to be able to switch between um, different modes because each one of them has a certain semantics that's useful in a certain context, which the README of Omnibus will go over in more detail. But I've also put a little uh, guide to these modes right here, uh, including you know what they do um, specifically. But uh, now let's move ahead to this uh, to the strategy from the hash, and then we'll just look up the uh, function here. And now this is going to let us play with all of the modes. Um, and so let's go to listen switching, and listen switching is going to do the following: if one thing is in progress and I do another one, it's going to switch to the new one. So in fact, as many times as I click, it'll keep switching and not complete until I've stopped adding new events. You might call that a debounce. And listen blocking, uh, we can see from this mode if uh, an event is in progress, if a handling is in progress and a new one comes in, we don't expect anything to happen. And this will have the beneficial property of uh, doing the first one, and then as many times as I click, it'll just ignore those. So um, 
blocking is kind of like throttling. So each one of these strategies, like I said, has a specific use case in mind, and it is the uh, flexibility of Omnibus powered by the concurrency operators of RxJS that lets us um, control things uh, very precisely. Uh, the next steps to this, I'm going to move into the next video so we can keep this short. They have to do with cancellation and, uh, and then moving on to the service-oriented approach where the counter service itself keeps track of state rather than just um, simply this uh, event uh, listener. Both uh, types of approaches are useful, and we'll get into that in the next video. Thanks.